Amidst the tensions generated by China's development of artificial islands in the South China Sea, Philippine Secretary of National Defense Voltaire Gasman reiterated the Armed Forces of the Philippines AFP, plan to rehabilitate the air and naval facilities in Subic Bay Freeport in the central part of the mainland island of Luzon. Subic Bay, a deep-water harbor located 50-50 miles northwest of Manila facing the South China Sea, was the service and logistics center for the U.S. 7th Fleet until November 1992. Accordingly, this move will enable the AFP to quickly deploy its fighter planes and frigates to any contingency in the South China Sea in the face of China's maritime expansion in these disputed waters. The Philippine government's plan to develop Subic Bay as a military facility was first announced in October 2012, four months after the Chinese occupation of Scarborough Shoal. When it was announced, Philippine and U.S. officials confirmed that Subic Bay wants the U.S. 7th Fleet home port and the primary staging area for all American naval activities in the Southeast Asian waters as a Philippine military facility that will host U.S. forces on a semi-permanent rotational presence. These U.S. forces will engage the AFP in regular joint exercises to develop the latter's doctrine and equipment in territorial defense and enhance the two allies' interoperability. There were also plans to preposition U.S. logistics assets in the Subic Bay and utilize some of the port facilities to service U.S. Navy ships. Earlier in April 2012, America's largest military shipbuilding company, Huntington Ingalls Industries, HII, Subsidiary AMSEC signed an agreement with South Korean shipbuilding company Hanjin Heavy Industries and Constructions to provide maintenance, repair, and logistics for U.S. Navy ships using Hanjin's dry docks in Subic Bay. Subic Bay could be one of the new bases that the U.S. could access, according to Philippine officials. But Paulino said he could not confirm any plan, saying higher-level officials would decide. My level is to prepare the SBIA, he said. The expanded defense deal was struck less than a year after U.S. private equity group Cerberus Capital Management took over the bankrupt Hanjin shipyard at Subic Bay, where the Philippine Navy also has a base. The rehabilitation of the shipyard has been described by Philippine officials as the biggest public-private partnership between the long-standing military allies. In January, U.S. officials from the Defense Department and Indo-Pacific Command visited the project. Subic played a critical role as a supply and maintenance hub for the U.S. military during the Vietnam War and the Cold War. In the future, the Pentagon could make use of Subic's commercial infrastructure, potentially reclaiming its status as a critical hub for Washington in times of crisis. The Philippine and U.S. navies could contract the commercial operators for supply, sustainment and repair services, said Gregory Poling, director of the Asia Maritime Transparency Initiative at the Center for Strategic and International Studies in Washington. This could, in theory, lead to Subic again becoming a major link in the U.S. Navy's logistics chain in the region, though that will happen through the contracting of local civilian companies, much as now occurs in Singapore. The U.S. and Japan the latter of which is seeking its own visiting forces agreement with Manila, are keen to develop Subic. The Japan International Cooperation Agency is helping develop a new master plan for Subic Bay and is supporting the Philippine Coast Guard to establish a base there. Washington also has allocated $82 million to develop the five Philippine bases to which it has been given access. The January 2019 Hanjin bankruptcy exposed the yard to a high-stakes ownership change. When two unnamed Chinese groups expressed interest in the yard, the Philippine defense establishment torpedoed their potential bid by raising national security concerns. Although it is a commercial shipyard, nothing can prevent the owners from making it into a de facto naval base and a maritime facility for other security purposes. Former Philippine Navy Chief Alexander Palma said at the time, Negotiations took place during a turbulent period for U.S.-Philippine relations. In early 2020, former President Rodrigo Duterte 
who had forged warmer ties with China threatened to terminate the 1998 Visiting Forces Agreement, which facilitates the entry of U.S. troops into the Philippines. The termination, which would have impaired the Allies' 1951 Mutual Defense Treaty, was rolled back by Duterte in mid-2021. Through the EDCA, U.S. forces are afforded two innovative access arrangements in the Philippines, namely, 1. Forward operating sites expandable military facilities with limited U.S. military support presence, and 2. Cooperative security locations facilities with little or no permanent American presence and maintained by the host nation. These are less expensive, less visible, and less vulnerable access arrangements that offer greater strategic and operational flexibility. Unfortunately, left-wing groups and ultra-nationalist personalities questioned EDCA's constitutionality as an executive agreement requiring no concurrence from the Philippine Senate. EDCA is currently in a legal limbo as both sides wait for a decision from the Philippine Supreme Court before the agreement can be implemented. However, confronted by Chinese island-building activities in the South China Sea, the Philippine government decided to push through with the development of Subic Bay as a training and forward launching facility for U.S. forces operated by the AFP. Secretary Gasman admitted that U.S. military, rotational, presence in the AFP military facilities would help. However, if the court decides against EDCA, the Philippine government will still proceed to develop these facilities inside Subic Bay Freeport.